So we'll start with the simple stuff as we always do at the top and at the front. We've got the uh, microphone and the headphone jacks for your internal audio. I, don't, I personally never ever use these, but I know lots of you do. We've got a reset button just here. It's uh, quite um, recessed as well. You're never gonna press it by mistake. You really have to do shove your finger down inside. Then you've got the normal power switch and then there's a, an LED ring around it and it also comes down the front here. I know we're just getting into the door there, but we'll cover that more in a little minute. Then we've got two USB 2s and then two USB 3s. And as I did have already said about the front door, so the front door this time, when we uh, swing the old girl open, these are kind of new compared to the uh, R3 and the R4. And essentially what they are is we've got hinges on either side. So you can now, thankfully, have the door open whatever which way you like. And all you have to do is unscrew this little tab, top and bottom, and then you can swap it over and fit it onto this one. And the clever thing is, is that the actual hinges stay in place and the hinges are now the latches. So when you push the door closed, the hinge does actually go to where it would have been if it was on the other side, but with just out that locating screw. So they're not magnetic uh, latches anymore, which does mean that you do have to give them more of a push than you would have done before. But it does mean that once they're on there, it is a much more um, uh, like you can really feel the latch. What we can see down the, the edge, it does go right the way to the bottom is the vents for the front of the case. And this is where all of the airflow for the front of the case comes in, including for the uh, front section here. But one of the things I do just want to cover quickly is this is a removable dust filter. Very easy to remove as well, much easier than the older models. I actually think this actually looks really nice as well. It's a really nicely designed uh, mesh guard however you want to put it but then you can see the uh, single 140 millimeter fan that it does come fitted with now when the uh, dust filter is on the air comes in the sides here and then round and that's the direct route into the front of the case but it's just something I do want to point out so we've got the two uh, optical bays up here which are very easily removable but the optical bays are also vented in the side because of our cooling options on the inside which we'll talk about uh, later but it does mean that this top section has direct access to the outside of the case without a dust filter and if you don't get the uh, air pressure set up in your case right dust will still be able to enter the case this way so for argument's sake your cpu cooler could be dragging air from the front of the case nice and under you know un, uh, you know unrestricted but it will also mean that there's not going to be any dust filter there as well so if you're a proper proper dust fiend fitting something over the optical bay area even if it's just hidden so that you can do it later on maybe a uh, maul in a 140 millimeter uh, C uh, cpu fan like a magnetic mount or something you might want to put over it uh, but obviously this is a very uh, minor point but it's just something that i'll pick up i've picked up on um, because of uh, the possibilities of you know if where it is a silently designed case you may end up wanting to be run it 24 7 as a home server or something like that and you do have probably what i would say a good third of the airflow for the front of the case uh, completely undust filtered. It's a very minor point. Some of you are probably going to make a bigger deal out of it than it really would be, but it's something I wanted to uh, mention. Also, while we're here, I've not mentioned that uh, on the R3 and the R4, the uh, front panel did have sound deadening, but it was sound deadening foam. This one actually has the bitumen that's featured in the rest of the case. Uh, you know, wherever the rest of the case has got uh, sound deadening, it's all bitumen. So that it also adds a nice bit of weight to the front. It does mean though that you do have to press and close the uh, door on the top hinge and then give it a push on the bottom hinge as well just to make sure that it's all done. But the fact that we can have the door open either way now is brilliant. Taking a look at the roof, you can see that we have three panels. You can see a whiter section here and it's just because there is a uh, flurry light in the ceiling or an LED light, sorry, in the ceiling that just focuses on this. Um, so it's not that the case is different colours, it's just the way that the light falls. But we have three panels on the top and you can 
get your fingers in and remove them. Now that one come off really easily because to be honest with you, earlier on when I was trying to get them off, I was a little bit forceful um, and I broke one of the tabs. So that is something, when you do these, take your time. Um, there are little tabs here, you can see the latches and they always go towards the front. Now at the, at the time, like many of you might have been, I didn't know this and I was trying to get it off from around this area. So start from the back and then you won't make the stupid noob mistake I did. So when you do that, you can see we remove that fan. We'll do one of the other ones. You start in the corner. Oh, come on, there we go. They are a proper pain, but they're not something that you're going to want to take off too often, to be honest with you. So just be careful with um, your mounts. Don't force them too much. Give them a little bit of a wiggle. Um, it's not going to be like trying to shove your whole fist up inside something. You're obviously going to have to lubricate it and make it all nice and slippery first. So yeah, don't just go wrenching any bits off. Now, we've removed all of these panels. These have got um, uh, sound in the top as well. Although, despite me saying about bitumen, these are actually the foam that would have been on the front of the old R3 for argument's sake. But that's all in there. Now, when we remove that, you can see that there is a massive expanse of um, grill at the top. It's also nice to say, a little bit of a dig at NZXT, that it's still that lovely punched hexagon mesh, not just a cut open section, getting flashbacks about the H2 coming back. But when we have a look at the top of the case, there are an awful lot of fan mounts up here. And essentially what you've got are fan mounts and they are offset, which is why it's so big, 140 millimeter times three, offset 120 millimeter times three so that does mean you can get a 420 millimeter or a 360 millimeter rad up here 360 mil rad will go from the back to about there on the front and then if you go for the uh 420 model which is the three times 140 millimeter fan they'll go right to the front there there are also quite strangely 280 millimeter fan mounts up here as well should you want to do it now, if you did just want to run a H100i or something, you just remove two of the vents and then you, you can keep this one on if you like. Now, I don't want to talk too much about uh, water cooling options from the top of the roof. I want to do a lot of that from on the inside, which we will cover later. But you can see there that you have an awful lot of options. And the fact that this is actually offset as well is a wonderful sign for what we might be able to do on the inside. So taking a view from a little bit further away, one of the things we can see that we've got the uh, thumb screws and they are the thumb screws that stay in the doors as well. Some people, or at least the back panel ones are, the uh, main panel ones, we've actually got a nice little latch on here now. So essentially you have a locating mechanism on these. It's quite a nice little touch. It's a shame that it didn't get followed around onto the back side as well, but I can kind of understand why. It just feels like they are two very separate panels though. It's like the, you've got a design for the back panel, a design for the front panel. I think it would probably have been nice if we had the removable ones on both sides or just the, um, the non-removable ones on both sides or the removable ones on both sides rather than having a mixture of the two. I find that a little bit, um, it, it makes my teeth itch as far as like an OCD is concerned. Also, around the back, we could, we've got the old uh, power supply mount at the bottom, which you can either have your power supply whichever way up that you want. One, two, three, four, five, six. Normal seven expansion slots or PCI slots in the back. 120 millimeter or 140 millimeter fan, which you can adjust up and down depending on whether you've got radiators on the inside or not, which is something that we'll talk about more in a moment. It does come with a 140 millimeter fan fitted. Something about the back section though is this is all of the other uh, meshed parts in the case have got covers on them, which we, you know, we've started to see with the roof mesh and stuff like this. Now this mesh section here is generally aimed at really hot graphics cards because where down near your SLI and your crossfire bridges, you'll see your graphics cards got little vents and that's so you can get more of the air out of the back. Now I think it would have been nice if this had a two stage um, cover on it with some more sound deadening on it sound deadening on it like that we did in the top section so that we could choose if we had a graphics card in the top we could just have the top one missing and you still have some sound deadening here or you could leave them both covered up and you you'd essentially get a choice 
Also, this massive amount of uh, mesh that's there is a really easy way for dust to get in if you don't have your uh, case pressure um, balanced right inside. This is why we always say to go for a positive pressure. So no matter what happens, you've got air always trying to come out this. Whereas if you have a negative pressure with too much air being forced out of the case, then you will end up uh, with this actually starting to bring dust in. And where it's such a big amount of uh, mesh there, it's a really easy way for dust to get in as well. So that's a little, another little niggle for, uh, you know, for me being like properly, properly picky. Moving round to the back of the case, what we can see, and this is probably out of the box, the nicest cabling I've ever seen for a, you know, a straight out of the, the box case. I've not done any of this. They come like this. You've got these little Velcro tabs that you can put all of your cables in nice and tidy. They're actually through the little um, zip tie tabs that I'm always raving about. And they are bloody everywhere as well. We've got ones even down this side so that you can um, strap up your uh, eight pin right up the back, all nice. We've got the eight pin entry point up here. But then if you did run a H100i or something like that, you've also got another one here to be able to put your fan cables through. Lovely. There's, um, there is actually a lot of room. You've got between 35 millimeters and 25 millimeters uh, of room around the back of the case. On these smaller parts, there's 25 mil of room. Uh, and round the bottom here, where you may have like the biggest amount of your cables, there's 35 millimeters of room because the motherboard tray is actually stepped. And we'll see more of that again on the inside, but you can definitely see, look, I've got my hand practically behind it. So you can understand what I'm saying. Also, just something to point out in a moment, two screws up here are for the optical bays. When we come round to the other side to talk about removing the optical bays, these are the two screws that I'm on about. Now, so for also from this side, something that we can show you, which I missed to tell you at the front, and I will, uh, I will put it in, is we've got three um, fan headers here. There's a fan controller in the front of the case that I forgot to show you. Um, so you can run your, uh, the fan controller off of these three fans nice and easy, and you've got the uh, SATA power there, and that's how it gets powered. Also what we have are um, two solid state drive mounts. Really nice and easy. You literally screw your solid state drive in, so you have the solid state drive on this side. You mount it on and then screw it back in again. There we go. So it's all lovely and easy. Um, obviously your solid state drives are quite thin. It will mean that if you've got your solid state drives here, you're gonna to have to go very careful with your SATA um, uh, mounts because some of the SATAs have got multiple connections on them and you might find that uh, you'll, it'll be a bit difficult for you to get one that's in the middle and you'll know the ones that I mean and then trying to get it over onto this one. So you may just have to use the ends of the SATA cables or get some uh, extensions or something. Now that's not the fault of um, Fractal, it's just the, the way that the SATA connections are made, they're a bit of a pain in the ass. It's one of the things that with most rigs that I build, it, it just winds me up so much. Other things to talk about while we're here is we've got a lovely wide open um, uh, grommet here for your power supply cables. There's a, there are two other grommets, long grommets down the sides here. They're actually pretty much covered up with the cables, but you know, you, you can see what I mean now, I'm trying to pull them out of sides. There is actually, it's stepped here as well. So your motherboard will come up to this point and then this is stepped. So it'll actually help uh, make your cables that bit tidier as well. Just one little thing that I do a lot, like I said to you, I don't use the audio panel connections. If you're not gonna use the front panel audio connections, just remove them, get rid of them. The less stuff that you have back here means the less mess and you can make it that little bit extra tidier. Round to the business side of the case. We can see again that we've got the bitumen on the side panel. There are four screws here. If you wanna fit a side panel fan in, then uh, you can fit 120 millimeter or a 140 millimeter fan in here. Uh, I would say that there is a slight recess, which is quite easy to see there. So it wouldn't be a bad idea if you got yourself a 140 millimeter magnetic uh, dust filter, just so that if you do fit one, obviously the fan will be on the inside. Magnet the um, dust filter on the outside, it can help th keep things clean. I say get yourself a 140, 
because if you put a 120 you're still going to have a grill around the outside it'll just help th keep things tidy if you don't want to and you just want to leave that in the side to make things extra quieter the mount does have that uh, sound deadening foam on it as well but i can hear people from all around the globe shouting i don't want a plain window i want a side panel you've already hinted to us this can have radiators in it tom i'm gonna fill it full of water cooling i want a fucking window well thanks to fractal being absolute legends i'm not even joking yet in 48 hours they had me a fractal window flown from china to the uk and delivered to my door in under 48 hours it was an absolute mission but they got it done. Now, it, it, obviously, the case is very much aimed at super quietness, um, you know, with all that sound deadening foam and all that kind of stuff. But once you start adding the, the option of putting big radiators in there and stuff like that, and they've spent a lot of time making sure things are dust filtered and all that kind of stuff, they, um, the window panel was always gonna be something that was gonna be available at launch. And I think it was worth showing you guys what it looked like as well. So the window panel's there, it's gonna miss the power supply, it's gonna be all open on the business area, the motherboard area of your case. It's a simple design, but it works. It has got the um, plastic wrap still on it. It's literally been in my possession for the last hour or so, but it's a lovely touch and they still fitted the bitumen round the outside to uh, give you as much sound deadening as they possibly can while still being able to look at your components. The window panel will end up costing you uh, about five pounds GBP more, so I don't know, maybe five to ten dollars more depending on what the exchange rates and stuff go like. But to be honest with you, if you, it really depends on how anal you want to be about silence. To be fair, it's not gonna make a huge amount of difference um, having the window there as long as you tune the parts on the inside correctly and don't just expect the uh, case to completely sound deaden everything on the inside which no case ever will you're still going to have to build yourself a quiet rig all the other bits do are help keep things quieter if you can build yourself a silent rig then a window panel I think it would be a shame not to have it all in there so big props to uh, Fractal for getting me that window panel here to be able to show you. As far as I'm aware, at the launch of this case, I'm the only person that's got one of those windows because they only sent the normal panels out to everybody else. So it was a big thing. Obviously, I said to them I was making a video, so they made a big effort to get there, and I think it's worth it as well because uh, a window panel, I think, for a lot of you guys, it's something that you're going to want. You're going to want to sit beside your case, and you're going to want to be able to see your parts on the inside. But the good bit about it is, is if you're one of those people that's using this for a home server, wants it super quiet, has the case underneath your desk or something like that, you've obviously got both options. So I've been able to show you both those options today, and it does help make things a lot visually a lot easier. Before we were saying about the steppedness of the case, you can see that the uh, case here comes inward and it does mean that it brings the grommets of the case round slightly, which means for your 24 pins and stuff, it's going to make things a lot easier to keep them that little bit tidier because you're not going to have so much of a curve in there. Um, it does mean that if your case is any longer than 80x, you're going to run into problems because there is a big sort of like a 20 mil step here that you're not going to be able to drop your case, your, um, uh, your motherboard down past. It does mean if you've got one of those motherboards where the uh, graphics card sits off the bottom, the very bottom of your motherboard as well, because some of them have those eight slots, this is not going to be compatible with that. Also, you've got a nice locating lug here, which means that when you're trying to fit the, uh, the motherboard into your case, this does make things a lot easier. I wish manufacturers would send these out with all of the cases, to be honest with you. Okay, so if I show you this picture, you see the four designs or the four images there for your hard drive racks. You've got the original way and then you've got the three other ones. I can, I've done it with my case, so here's this one. You can see that you've got the bottom three racks facing normally. Then you can spin the top five racks round so that it's uh, kind of like front to back kind of alignment. Um, so you can have those there is going to mean that if you've got a big graphics card it's going to be difficult for you to get your uh, hard drives in and out 
but it's just an option and it is something that you can literally just spin it round. it's really easily easy then you've got the other way um, you can uh, take the three bay out and then you can drop the five bay down which then opens up the top 140 millimeter fan to blow air straight over the rest of your graphics cards and then you can move the three bay across to the left you can have it taken out if you want another thing that you can have here which we'll cover again in a, in a minute is if you were to just remove the five bay from this and leave the three bay where it is it does leave you room <coughs> at the front for a water cooling radiator i think my throat needs its own water cooling at the moment but it does mean that you can uh, offset those three bays so you can have uh, three uh, mechanical hard drives there and still have a up to a 360 millimeter radiator in the roof uh, in the front sorry if you wanted Flipping the case over to show you from this angle, I do need to uh, open the front door and this is the best view that I've been able to give you of the dust filter for the bottom. It does go from the front right the way to the whole length of the case which does act as a dust filter for your power supply if you have the fan facing downwards. Uh, and then uh, also there's uh, 140 millimetre uh, and 100, sorry, 220 millimetre fans down here as well and 240 millimetre fans down here as well. This is more water cooling options which we will cover in more depth in a moment. But it's just to show you that the, uh, the hard drive racks do get mounted down here. I've only put two screws in each but they do all screw in from the bottom which does add extra uh, rigidity, especially to this front one. Once you've done it though, what I would do is screw the bottom in first and then screw the top screws in afterwards. You may need to give them a little bit of a pinch because they're squares, they're not going to stay perfectly rigid and that's why there's all of the extra screws. And then continuing on in the water cooling theme, you can see with this one, we've moved all the hard drive cages right the way to the very top. By doing that, it gives us a good solid... 100 millimeters of room there so you could uh, easily get a 60 mil thick radiator there and a single set of fans um, have that uh, with the radiator at the bottom obviously you don't need to run the five and the three you can just have the um, uh, just have the five at the top should you want it's completely you know it's very modular you can kind of choose which way that you want to swing with it which way is going to work best for you but in this configuration you do need to have the five at the top because the five's got the uh, mounts that will reach down to be able to screw into the front and into the top whilst we're talking about front radiator options i do just want to say that you uh for the for this section where you have lifted it up so you have a radiator in the bottom you can stick a couple of screws in there's one here and one slightly further back which screw this uh, top hard drive bay into this top plate but this top plate is also uh, easily removable if you did want to run a full 360 millimeter or a 420 millimeter radiator in the roof you do have to remove this top plate which means you have to sacrifice your optical base it's just four screws to be able to whiz it out uh, but it, you know it is just there also when we do think about it if we run um, a radiator up in the front actually we'll talk about that this is just actually moving on to the water cooling options that I keep telling you about this is going to be the easiest way for me to do it without showing you a gazillion different radiators uh, fitted throughout the case and if we start in the top in the roof I've already spoken to you and shown you about the offset mounts for the 120 millimeter and the 140 millimeter fans in the roof radiator thickness for the 140 millimeter fans uh, is going to be around the 50 to 55 millimeter mark without a set of fans on you should still be able to get your fans on again running this kind of thickness even though it's offset it's still going to limit your your memory sizes so don't go buying any massive for argument's sake like dominated platinums because they're not going to fit in there um, so 55 millimeter thick for the 140 millimeter base fans they do say though for the 120 mils you can put whatever you want in there um, if you do go bigger than a 240 or a 280 in the roof you do have to sacrifice that uh, the optical bays in the front and that optical bay plate that i showed you how to remove before it's just four screws and then that opens up the whole area of the roof for you for that mesh um, uh, so you can run uh, 420 360 280 240 140 and 120 in the roof 
I'm personally not a fan of any single radiator, um, a single fan rads. Uh, they just add too much mess, in my opinion, which is why those ones at the back where it says 120 and 140, I would say avoid those like the fucking plague. I hate them. Um, it just covers stuff up, and it, it, honestly, they're just a hindrance. Please, for the love of God, stop buying those damn things or stop adding them in because you think they're good. They're not. Um, moving down to the bottom, you can see that we've got a 240 millimeter radiator there, and it does only say a 140 or a 120, not a dual, um, uh, like a 280 millimeter mount. The fan mounts are there. It's just the fact with the uh, 280 millimeter radiators. There are two sizes. There are 15 millimeter gaps, and then there are 100. Uh, sorry, there are 20 millimeter gaps. So it's just very specific <coughs> radiator differences. And in the case, they are 15 mil, smack bang on 15 mil gaps. So it says it doesn't support a 280 in the bottom, but technically, you could get one in there. You're going to have a very hard time though with the uh, power supply, which is probably why they've said don't bother. They said it doesn't support it, because it will be very, very tight. I'd personally only go with a 240 down there anyway, which is what they suggest too. Moving along to the front, you can have a 360 millimeter radiator in the front if you wished. I covered before about the uh, top section of the front panel uh, not having a dust filter there because of where the optical bays are. This is also going to be a point with the 360 millimeter fan. Part of that top uh, fan won't be dust filtered, so it may be something that you'd want to look at uh, either fitting one from the inside or maybe look at, uh, like I said to you about uh, getting a magnetic filter and fitting it over that optical bay just to make sure that things are covered and to try and help keep things clean. Trying to get into a radiator to keep it clean and dust in it and that type of stuff is a total nightmare. So you want to think about this before you build it rather than after it and it will make cleaning things later on uh, much easier. You can obviously, if you want, put a 280 or a 240 in the front and then you've obviously got single fan options there for you if you want as well. Um, so there's an infinite amount of options there with water cooling radiators. Best case scenario with the radiators People are probably already thinking, oh, I can have a 360 in the roof and a 360 in the front. Well, no, you can't because there wouldn't be enough room because the 360 in the roof would hang down over where the front one would need to be. So personally, I'd say the best case scenario with water cooling options in this case is going to be a 360 mil radiator in the roof and then either a 240 millimeter radiator in the front or in the bottom. I would personally go for a 240 millimeter radiator in the front because then you get that dust filter there as well and it will leave uh, room for your power supply and leave things all nice and open um, rather than uh, always having to be ripping the radiator sorry ripping things out of the, uh, the bottom and stuff you're gonna it'll just make for a tidier loop and a 360 mil rad in the roof 240 millimeter in the front you can easily get a full loop done off of that so you can have your CPU, your MOSFETs, your chipsets, and a pair of graphics cards, no matter what one's run about. We could be talking about two 290Xs here. Um, and obviously people are going, of course that's enough, Tom. But what I'm talking about is my level of water cooling, where uh, not only is it cool, but you can practically not have those fans running and keep your system immensely quiet as well. Obviously, if you do do the 240 and the 360 in the roof options, you're gonna to have to go very careful about where you put your uh, hard drives and you're also gonna to have to think long and hard about the reservoir and the pump that you're gonna use. Uh, but there are lots of D5 options now with tube reservoirs that come off the top that you could bolt into the floor. That would work wonders. And oh my God, the more I talk about this, the more I wanna do it. Okay then peeps. So moving on to the conclusion of the, now I can put them side by side, the two cases the Fractal R5. Now, one of the things I do want to say is prices I now know. The non-windowed version is going to be uh, $86.99 and rumours are that the uh, window version, obviously I've already said it's going to be slightly more expensive, it's going to be $89.99. So we're going to put them, yomp them both in at 90 quid worst case scenario. So, uh, award is going to be the OC3D Gold Award. Um, but also, just to kind of put a little bit of spin on it, 
because essentially what I do is there is another award which will always go with a gold award but I don't hand it out very often I've only given it to one other product ever but I am going to give the Fractal R5 window the TTL white gold award as well and it's not necessarily because it's arrived white although sometimes it can help put a bigger smile on my face um, but essentially for £90 this case has crammed an awful lot into it but also more importantly when they made the R4 I did make a lot of criticisms about the fact that uh, the ARC series of cases from Fractal one of the first cases to ever really put a massive offset on the top grills to make water cooling options a lot easier uh, and when I first said this Fractal kind of said no, we don't need to do that with the, uh, the R series because these ones are just purely aimed at silence. People don't want to water cool them. Until they saw the Im immense amount of people going nuts that they couldn't water cool them, why didn't they use the Arc style roof? And there was a lot of stuff going along online and eventually, and still, you can pick up, uh, you can see project logs in the fractals with just epic amounts of water cooling in, the, in them and there wasn't a reason why you couldn't have mixed the two. The arcs are quite a bit cheaper, the, uh, these defined ones, yes they are more aimed at silence but there's a lot more about and going on with them as well to kind of um, give you the reason why you pay a little bit more for them. So the fact that they've gone from the four, which was a good case, into the five and they finally take on a lot more stuff but also with things like the long um, uh, grill in the bottom for the dust filter, the fact that you can move all the hard drives around, the fact that you can remove that top plate, the fact that you can remove these plates, the door can now go either side. They finally sat there and gone, all right, let's not just decide where people want to put stuff, let's help them decide. And it does mean that you can evolve and make your rig a lot more personal. The fact that we can easily get a 360 millimeter radiator in the front and another one in the f uh, sorry a 360 mil radiator in the roof another one in the front still be able to have hard drives still have dedicated solid state drive stuff it's they really have gone that extra mile to cram an awful lot of case into what is effectively not a lot of money um so it's thoroughly thoroughly deserving of the gold award and like I said it's only the second product ever at the moment they have been cases um, but it's only the second time I've ever handed out that TTL white gold award now uh, just to clarify with the white gold I get a lot of people going oh something's not very good because it's not got the white gold award the white gold award is only ever going to be given out to things that are where you can see that the manufacturer has put a lot of time and effort in price is right everything kind of works out for them and it's something that will only ever be given out by me personally as well it's not something the rest of the OC3D team is ever going to be allowed to give out so it's a very personal that's why it's the TTL white gold award so please don't be dismayed if you don't see another product get the white gold award the fact that it's got a gold award in the first place means it's very very much worthy of your uh, consideration of spending your own pennies on it but generally when I give the white gold award it's because I like it to the point that I would actually spend my own money on it rather than doing what I normally do which is just say can I have one of these please. Um, so this I would happily go and take £90 out of the bank at this present moment in time and go and spend my own money on it to the very point of the R5 is going to be the case that uh, I build my 2015 home server into. Now my home server isn't like the website server at all, it's just the, the, the one that I use at home, hence home server. But the fact that I actually want to use this case in that build should speak volumes to you. Also something to make uh, very clear is by me showing you the window panel and this one, You've got the two very different options of cases there as well. You can have the stupidly, ridiculously quiet one, which I do have to be clear, if you go and stick a screaming loud graphics card in there, or a CPU fan that's just going to be spinning up to 100% every time you touch the mouse, it's not a sound deadening box, it's not going to silence everything. You still are going to have to make sure that you set everything up on the inside right, use the right components and all that type of thing but coupled all together you'll be able to build yourself a rig that the only way that you'll know it's on is the fact that the light is on 
And the reason why I know that is because a few years ago when I was using the R3s for the OC3D competition prizes, I did quite literally build systems that were gaming systems where you only knew that they were on by the fact that that light come on. There was no other noise that come out of those cases whatsoever. The R5 has taken things from the R3 and the R4 to another level, so you'll be able to build things even quieter if you're willing to put a bit of time, effort and thought into how you uh, build it, configure it, set it up, fan speed reducers, using the fan controller, um, you know, basically just getting things in there and tuned up right. But also, with the window panel, which I think is where the water cooling guys are going to want to know about, the fact that you're going to be able to get yourself a, an epic water cooled rig in there, again, show it off, but still have something which could be immensely, immensely quiet. Remember though, when you go adding water cooling radiators in, you're adding a lot of fans in. So don't go thinking that you can smash a load of fans in there, run them on 12 volts and things are going to be quiet because it's got a bit of bitumen in the side. You are still going to have to think about uh, sound uh, fan speed reducing those fans. My Orca, I've got uh, 13 fans in that and uh, they're all actually, sorry, 12 because I've got two 360s in it. They're actually on two fan speed reducers because uh, six go into one. That's how quiet I've managed to tune that and uh, it still puts out amazing temperatures. There's no reason why you can't do something similar like this, but you do have to make sure that you put time and effort into getting it all set up correctly. I'm not gonna go into any more of a massive tangent talking about other rigs and servers and bloody orca and stuff like that. This thing is brilliant. Like I said, I would spend my own money on it happily. I'm going to be replacing the R3, and I have been using the R3 since bloody launch as well as my old home server. So it's now time, what, two, three years later for me to now move in and I'm gonna be using the R5. I did have plans to use another case, but this thing has completely won me over. So you'll be seeing a lot more from the R5 in the not too distant future. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys end up doing it with as well. If you guys end up purchasing one, jump onto the Overclock 3D forums because I'd love to see whether it's a home server that you've got going in there, a completely silent, I don't know, uh, this thing could be perfect for an audio workstation for people that are recording and stuff. If it's a gaming rig, get onto the forums, come and show us because I'd like to see what you do with it to see whether it might inspire me with what I may end up doing with mine. But for now at least, I need to uh, refresh, <laughs> I need to have more water again, I've been talking too much. But this is Tiny Tom Logan with the Fractal R5, gold award winning and only the second product I've ever given the white gold to with another video for you, out. Bing! I didn't get stuck, I just couldn't be bothered to stop. <laughs>